Microsoft, Bing, and Edge have just announced some insane updates that are going to change the way you browse the internet. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of these major updates. And trust me, it's only getting better from here. So here I am on Microsoft Bing, Edge browser. And essentially, if you are new to this, it's essentially ChatGPT and AI prompt built into the browser with additional features that you can do. So the first one is you can create images inside of their AI ChatGPT style design right here, except they did add some new updates. So first off, let's go ahead and create an image and I wanna show you something that they added. So first let's pick an image topic. So let's say create an image of a UFO in space. Let's just pick something fairly simple. And once you have noticed that this is on the creative section, so you notice there's three different options, which if you were to do this yourself, you would have to switch over to the creative mode. Now it's going to be creating the image. So while that is loading, let me just showcase what are some of their major updates. And they just announced this again, the actual AI image creation built into the browser. However, they added additional features. So here is our UFO picture. And all you need to do is log into your Bing image creator to see that, but look at this. Got all these images, I can click on one and literally download this, save it, whatever I need to. And then you can rinse and repeat that just like a mid journey style or any other stable diffusion, etc. So here was one of the major updates. And obviously this is in English, but if you were to watch this video, essentially they have more than 100 languages now. So obviously for people outside of English speaking countries, this is going to revolutionize AI image generation. So for us to test that out, let's go ahead and say, uh, create an image of a UFO in space. And I'm trying to pick a different language that I would say is quite not as popular. Obviously Spanish is definitely something I'm sure a lot of people know. And I'm sure a lot of these other languages, but let's just randomly scroll and then whatever it lands on, basically I'll pick that one. So here we have Danish. So also, I mean, Danish is probably something that obviously not everyone speaks, but let's just go ahead and paste this in here. And then while we're loading that, let me switch this up to pick something even more. I think for now, I'm trying to think of some languages that might not even, uh, not many people have heard of, or at least in terms of translations might not be as popular and so far i mean there's only a few that i'm fairly familiar with the rest i'm not too uh familiar with but for example camera which is uh usually you notice this in um cambodia so let's go ahead and paste this in and let's see if it does the same thing so here we can see it looks like both with camera i can't remember the exact pronunciation with that and danish it looks like it managed to do exactly that. So, so far, Bing, I guess they're moving up with the translation and able to actually notice different languages and clearly replicate that. That's already a major update. So now let's move on to some more additional features and let's just see. So this one, they actually showcase two videos here. Let's focus on the first one. So here we can see, it looks like they have some sort of chat history. So this was two days ago and it says Bali trip planning. And it looks like they're continuing the conversation from just this overview right here and showcasing some things you can do. So let's just take a look at the actual description. So they said two features right now. They said starting shortly, you'll be able to pick up where you left off with previous chats, AKA chat history, which with current ChatGPT4 and even just Depot 5, we currently already have some sort of similar uh, abilities in that sense. And even comparing that with ChatGPT4 3.5, it's has that already built in. However, on Microsoft Edge browser, building that inside of your actual browser, instead of having to go to a separate website, that's already going to make life significantly easier. And then also when you dig deeper into a chat, for example, you can move your Edge sidebar to so keep your chat on hand while you browse. So that's also a cool little feature they've added. So here's another update they call this one persistent chat. And essentially, they're going to ask for summer activities can do in Seattle that aren't hiking. Showcases some options with a link to the website and there you can see that. 
And another update they mentioned is an improved summarization for long documents. So PDFs, blogs, you name it, anything you need summarization on, it seems that they are improving that. And also they state that Edge Mobile will be able to add page context as well. So you can add being related questions to the mobile page, which is a pretty cool feature. Now here is what they call Edge Action. So let's go ahead and take a look at this update. So I want to watch action movies, showcase some movies, here we go, we have the Batman and play it on Apple TV and take a look at that. So just from that quick little video, it was able to ask it to play a movie on a particular product, which was Apple TV, it showcased it and boom, there you go. So if you're like, hey, I wanna watch a movie on Netflix about action, boom. Go to Netflix, if you're logged in already, I'm assuming it starts it up, that's gonna be significantly easier versus you having to go Netflix, log in, do this. So again, it's micro little changes but this is just the beginning. Now this one they call Compose. So let's go ahead and let's see how this looks. And essentially they're on Microsoft Word, I believe, or cover letter. And basically they are creating a summary of a draft of a little description and boom, we have it right there. Now it's actually pretty cool if you don't know this is if you were to go to the Bing AI generator again and you click on Compose, guess what? If you draw, go up right now, you can see it's a very, very similar design. So I will say, let's do a summarization of something. Let's say, um, today I went for a walk in the park. I saw a fish in the river and many dogs playing in the grass. Okay, simple, typical day in the park. And let's go ahead and change this to funny, okay? And let's go ahead and do, let's see, paragraph maybe, let's keep it. Let's try short generate draft. And let's see how this AI changes this somewhat simple sentence into a funny description. Now it says, today I went for a walk in the park, saw a fish in the river, many dogs in the grass. Fish looked at me and said, hello human, do you want to join me for a swim? I was shocked and ran away. The dog chased me and barked, don't be rude fishy. He's our friend. I was terrified and confused. How did they learn to talk? So obviously this is something I probably would never use, <laughs> but just to see the differences in terms of this and the fact that you can pretty much summarize and auto generate a completely different tone of voice is quite insane. So let's just do one more professional. Let's maybe say an email, make it a little bit medium and generate the draft. And as you can see, again, this is all while I'm watching or browsing in the actual browser right here and also editing at the same exact time and it's on the same view and it's not anything different links. And you can see why this is a significantly easier user experience because you don't have to change and you can do everything while you're doing some other tasks as well. And as you can see, dear John, hope you find this email, went for the walk, thought of you. And basically you can see this is a pretty nice professional email. And for me to write that out myself, I could obviously do that, but I just did it within literally just clicking two, three buttons and hitting generate draft. So yeah, it could save a couple minutes, but if you were to do long, for example, blog posts, then that's when it starts to save lots of minutes. So let's move on to the next updates. Now this feature might be the most impressive I've seen so far. And I've mentioned similar ideas in my previous videos about being Edge browser, but let's just take a look at what exactly is going on. Now, essentially, they're in New York City looking for a new restaurant, asking for recommendations. And you can take a look at this. And let me just pause it really quick because it's quite quick. And essentially, it goes ahead and maybe go a little bit there. There we go. And you can see search for new restaurants. And it says using open table and then generating answers for you. So the main concept, let me actually go down and showcase what they wrote out. So the main concept is, for example, open table. You can go ahead and have it help you find and book a reservation. And then also they have Wolframa Alpha can create powerful visualizations to complex ideas, so math, science, whatever it is. And again, I was talking about a travel reference in the previous video where, for example, go to Booking, Expedia, you name it, and say, hey, book a hotel for me. And if I'm assuming in the future, you'll have all your information locked in and it can do it all for you, two bedroom, three bedroom, this price, etc. And then next thing you know it, 
order something from McDonald's for me and it does it for you. Again, this is just the beginning, but as you can see, this is how AI is revolutionizing the world. And these are the major updates for the Bing Microsoft Edge browser. So if you wanna see the latest updates in the AI space, hit that like button and subscribe.